Welcome to the Pool Nation podcast, where it's all pool talk. And we ain't talking about netting and jetting or splashing and dashing. We're talking about becoming a nation of pool pros. We talk about the latest products, trends, and training in the pool industry. Now let's welcome your host with over a decade of industry insider experience and still the reigning champion of Marco Polo, Edgar De Jesus, and his co-host, John Jade J. Flawless, the fastest netter in the West, and Zach the Pool Boy Nicholas. Welcome, everyone, to the Pool Nation Live podcast with myself, your host, Edgar De Jesus. And yes, I am the reigning champion of Marco Polo, along with John J.J. Flawless, the fastest netter in the West, and the famous Zach, the pool boy, Nicholas. In today's podcast, we talk about the different challenges that we see going into the summer of 2022, and we're going to break those down. I want to welcome everyone to our live podcast, the podcast where it's all pool talk, and we ain't talking about netting and jetting or splashing and dashing. We're talking about becoming a nation of pool pros. And yes, we will talk about the latest products, trends, and training in the pool industry. But before we get started today, I want to thank our sponsors for this podcast, the Ultimate Pool Tools, the SPPA, PoolInvoice.com, and Blu-ray Excel. We want to thank them for their continued support. Zach, good morning. Good morning, Pool Nation. Happy Friday. So kind of random note here, I discovered something this week that I'm really thrilled about. Have you guys heard of Zappos? Yeah, I'm feeling like I'm finally getting with the time. So I'm the type of person that I buy shoes like maybe once a year and I'm having a harder and harder time. I go to these stores and they're making these like super bright, colorful, huge soles with like these springs on the back and stuff. And so last year, I haven't really been able to find a decent pair of shoes, and my shoes are actually peeling apart right now. The soles are coming off, and someone showed me Zappos the other night. So I finally just ordered a pair of shoes this morning, and I'm feeling good about it. So overall, it's a good week, a good Friday, and Daddy's going to have some shoes. Now, question for you, because for some reason, again, figure it's me. Like, I can't just go buy shoes because I'm different sizes and different types of shoes. Do you have that problem or no? You, you got to get into, like, the kid zone, right? <laughs> Shots fired right Maybe off the, the bat. Now, I haven't even said good morning, John, and he's already shooting. Good Lord. I'm okay. sure you have difficulty. You're shopping in the wrong department, bro. You go into an adult oh. shoe store, and then you're trying to find shoes. It's not going to work. <sighs> <laughs> Man, good lord. What's up, Jay? Janie, first response, Maria, Jeanette. Big shout out to all you guys out there. Let me see if I can change this conversation into a different direction because there's shots fired right off the bat. You know what, John? <laughs> Remember that because I'm going to get even. I know you That's are. the beauty I of it. Know. I'm going to get even. You, I mean, come on. You just lobbed that one up. You threw that one up. A big softball right I there. Did. I had to hit it out to play. Yeah. There's. I- <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> hey, what's up, Matt, man? Big shout out to your brother. Yeah. So I'm getting bagged on here right off the bat, Matt. This guy. So J- John, good morning. How are you? I'm doing well, actually. Today I woke up a little more tired than I usually am, but I had some things I had to take care of in the morning, but I'm excited. And the reason why I'm excited is I have some of my boys that are on live with us right now. We have a couple of newcomers listening to our podcast. So uh, I want to. Big shout out to Mike. Mike just jumped yeah, on. What's up, yeah, brother? Yeah. I Big told... shout out to all you guys out there. Right. We should have a few more too that are going to be popping on right now. So I'm trying to figure out how do I get into this chat? To... Where, where's this chat that you guys are talking to people? How do you know they're on? Oh, we can't allow you into that chat, John. Obviously, right. <laughs> they will ban us from Facebook That's and why. YouTube. And- you haven't enabled that for me, right? No, I get it. That makes sense now. So I just want to say hi to everybody out there and shout out to my boys that jumped on to listen to me. They already listened to me all day talking on the phone and I was giving them some shit, I think. What was it? Like, I don't know, last week. So they've committed now to jumping on and listening to us every week now. Yeah. So big shout out to Robert. Robert jumped on live here as well. So big shout out to everybody out there. Danielle. Hey, Daniel Bowden. Daniel Bowden. Did you call big him shout Daniel? out. <laughs> Dude, you are. Wow. <laughs> You call Daniel Bowden Daniel, dude. You, you, Holy shit. You, you see what I have to deal with, guys? Like, this is constant 
Oh, oh man. Dude. So, Poor uh, hey, Howard, big shout out. Oh, hey, uh, Howard, why hi John? Why not hi Edgar and Zach? What's going on, man? What what the hell? So, John, you got a shout out over here, a big hi from Howard Pringle. Howard Pringle. Who's that? Another friend of mine. Um, he owns a pool service company out in Southern California. Really good guy. Very uh-huh. smart. A lot of good brains. Mm-hmm. That's good. For all the new listeners here that are on here, I'm going to do a little backtrack here because if you didn't listen live to our last podcast that we put out, John went a little bit philosophical on us, right, Zach? He kind of went he kind of went deep with us, right? So hold on. Before I continue with that comment, well, your boys are having fun with you over here today. I, I think I'm going to enjoy this podcast today. Mike is saying, it's okay. He acts like a chick. <laughs> oh, we're talking about Daniel. <laughs> hey, John, how's the heat down there? Already eight, 85 degrees up here in Ventura, and I can only imagine down there. Yeah, we were so, already over 100 uh-huh. yesterday. That's crazy. For all you guys listening, so John went a little bit philosophical on us last time, right, Zach, when he was talking about the whole Steve Harvey parachute or jump kind of thing. So I edited the podcast. I started listening to it. And John, you were like on this like deep conversation really? and I got sucked into it. I really got sucked into it. So I use a lot of my OK Google and Cortana to just kind of do my searches and stuff like that. So I kind of say, hey, you know, OK, Google, play Steve Harvey parachute or jump. And I just want you to show what comes up because you must have gotten it confused with something because <laughs> watch this. I'm going to use this on my computer. Everybody listening, watch this. Cortana, play Steve Harvey parachute or jump. I've been single for a long time. Yeah. And my friend suggests that I find an ugly man because he'll treat me like gold. Do you think that's true? Should oh, I go out looking for an ugly guy? That's 100% true. Ugly men are the really? best men you can get. I Look, that. first of all, they don't get invited into a lot of people's homes. So when they get there, they really behave really nicely. Ugly men know how to fix things. You ain't got to worry about them cheating on you because don't nobody else want them. It's a wonderful experience. Get yourself an ugly man and fulfill. He'll work hard for you. He good for security, scare people off. <laughs> like, yeah, get your ugly man. All your dreams come true. What the hell is that, John? That, that wasn't it. But look, dude, that man has a, spits a lot of wisdom, man. I, he, I don't think he's wrong. You think he's wrong? Hey, Zach. Well, why do you think Zach, Janie here, married me? Right. So here, here's where it all makes sense, guys. John is always bashing on me and Zach that we're the ugly ones of the crowd, and he's the one that I was always teasing that he's the good looking one. He plays this parachute thing, and that's what Cortana brings up. Oh, so wow. I'm like, no. "What were you? Di- Honestly, what were you? You were just messing with us? No, because that's what comes up no, when you bullshit. do that. Are you, okay, are you being Google, serious? No, if you look it up, look up par- I'm telling you, and you should play it. I don't know how I can play it, but I'm going to send you the link because I think it's important. I'm going to look it up. Steve Harvey. <laughs> Parachute. Oh, my God. You guys, th- th- this is John oh, no. just look, busting it's called our jump. jumps over here. Here it is. Just look up Steve Harvey parachute speech, it, and, and it comes up as jump. Look it up. So you said parachute, right? Yeah. So the parachute one is the one for the ugly man. It must be a parachute to kind of protect you gotta yourself. You got to jump to be successful. Man. Look, I think it's, <laughs> I think it's worth. Can I play it, or, or are you the only one that has? No, I won't. I, play. I, I don't know. You can try to play no, it. I, I don't know. Uh, John is the ugly pool dad. Yeah. I always wanted. <laughs> Who said that? Michael Bluff, Mike. Perfect. You're going to have a rough crowd over here. And you know what? I'm loving it, guys, because he always bashes on me and Zach. So, you know what? Just keep it coming, boys. Keep it coming. So, <clears throat> I don't. What, what yeah. chat are You're you You're not on, getting Andrew? any of that. I'm yeah. not getting any on, of that. Man. Come on, man. So, you know what? I'm going to send you right now as we get into the next section, I'm going to send you guys the login so you can log into the website and then you'll be able to see all the chats in one. So we have Restream and what it does is if people are on YouTube or Facebook or wherever they're at, it just sends it to one page. That way all the comments are together. Two years later, we finally get to look at it. Thanks, Edgar. Must be IG. 
People, people's choice phone line is what they're saying over here. Man, these guys are on fire over here. This thing is like, it's not stopping. It's hard to kind of concentrate here today. <laughs> here, there you go. Oh boy. <laughs> um, oh man, these guys are on fire. So, all right, guys, let's jump and get this podcast started a little bit here today. So the first thing that we want to talk about is if you guys have questions you want answered on the podcast or on Instagram, go to poolnation.com. At the top button, there is one that says submit questions. Click on that. You can submit your questions. John, Zach, and I will go ahead and answer those questions. Let's see here. Uh, John, like I have got to send you this login. Please. Because li- literally I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven messages within the last like 15 seconds. Oh, They're just lighting you up. I'm telling you. So <laughs> I need to get visibility of it because they know I'm not watching and I don't see what the hell they're saying. So they know I can't get pissed. <laughs> and they're saying here that I'm sure are inside jokes. That, oh, they're just letting it rip. Oh, for sure. They're letting it for rip. Sure. So, yep. So, hey, worst customer experience so far. <laughs> All right, guys. The other thing that I wanted to talk about, and I had been made a mistake on this, is you guys can go to our merch store. We did open our merch store. Here's the mistake that I did, guys, is when I set up the pages, it was only displaying, I think, like 18 of our products, and we have over 50 in there. So you guys can go back to the merch store now and you'll be able to see everything on there. So just go to poolnation.com. You'll see a big button that says merch store. You click on it. It'll take you there. And we have everything from hats, shirts, backpacks, aprons. We have it all. The other thing is we have a financial business class on April 23rd. For those of you that are interested, you can send me a message or you can go to poolnation.com. You will be able to register there. I believe we only have one spot left for that one. So go register. That's the one where we talk about the different business types, the pool nation metrics. We talk about the common reasons why businesses fails. We talk about insurance, billing software, setting it up so that it works for you. And then we go into the deep dive into accounting. We do a full profit and loss exercise so that you enter your numbers. And by the time that you leave, you're going to know your true cost of service your true repair profit. And by the time you're done, you're really going to know where your business is at when it comes to making money. So go there, check it out and register. Michael Bluff over here is saying, it's a great class. I've done it. So, oh, they're asking for Pool Nation golf balls. That's actually a good one, John. Oh, dude, that's badass. Because we're going golfing on Sunday. Good one. Yeah. Mike Bluff over here, one-on-one coaching is a game changer. Thanks for that, Mike. So guys, I want to talk about the challenges that that everybody's going to be seeing going into summer of 2022. So we're obviously April. And I want to talk about the different areas and get your thoughts on them. I want to talk about, obviously, the chemical situation. I want to talk about product availability and the supply chain issues. I want to talk about the labor market and employee retention. Let me start by asking each one of you where you see the biggest challenges for us as a pooling industry going into summer of 2022? So for challenges going into this year, I know recruiting is going to be an ongoing thing. It has been for the last few years. And I think we'll talk about it a little bit more later on. Obviously, product and pricing availability is going to continue to be a challenge. I think that on our end, we're seeing that let up just a little bit, But we've changed a lot of how we do things. We're ordering things in advance. We're putting in these orders way ahead and they're getting filled way down the line. And I think that's going to continue on. And then something kind of outside of what we've been talking about that I think is going to be a challenge, or at least what we're experiencing, is there seems to be a big demand for our services, for pool-related services. And it's going to be hard to say no to all of these customers that are coming in wanting us to do this or do that when we don't have the capacity, right? So putting people on a waiting list, we're doing that right now. And it's kind of a challenging thing because you just want to tell everyone yes and get out there. But we have to be aware of what kind of workload we can handle and what kind of workload we can put on our team so that we're not just burning out or burning our people out. So I think that one's going to be something interesting this year. I'm glad I let you go first, Zach. I guess I'm not going to get that deep because you actually said what I was going to say, which is right on. So you guys know we get a script, well, not necessarily a script, but just like bullet points of what we're going to be talking about. So we have an idea and I never look at them and I'm looking at it for the first time and I'm thinking, okay, I'm looking, this is what I'm going to talk about. And and then I hear Zach talk about it and I'm like, okay. 
Zach just answered, just said what I said. So I'm going to pretty much say ditto, but I'm going to go a little bit deeper into the last point. I think that is the one thing that a lot of us are not paying attention to. We're all hyped up and worried about product inventory issues, prices, the summer heat, right? Those are, you know, those are the things we've been talking about for years now, or for the last couple of years, at least. And we all kind of have that issue going into summer. But this year, because of COVID and the pandemic and what we've been through, I think we have a whole host of new problems. And first of all, I'd like to say congratulations to all the pool service companies that are still around, because there are a lot of companies out there that have gone away. I can't tell you how many routes are being sold or how many people that I know that have just put the pole up and said, hey, I'm done. I want to go do something else. This isn't working for me. So if you've made it into the summer season, congratulations, you've done what you've needed to do to survive, but it's not over yet. And I think we're going to have a whole host of new problems and Zach nailed it perfectly. And I've already started seeing it. We've always had an influx or a constant flow of new customers calling or people looking for work and repair. But as of late, it is almost like quadrupled for us. And it is a little overbearing to have all these phone calls, especially for those of us that are entrepreneurs and our business owners, we're hungry for money. This is what we're doing. I mean, we know that work equals money and, you know, we have a goal and we want to grow our business and we want to do more and more. And the problem is when we're faced with that situation or an abundance of opportunity, sometimes we start to slack in other things that are very important And that could be as little as like quality of work, employee morale. When things get real busy, shit can hit the fan really quick. And you have to be disciplined enough to either figure out what your capacity is, like Zach said, and know how much work you can take on without it causing any issues with what you've already built. And it's a beautiful problem to have, but it can be dangerous if you don't use it correctly or if you don't take advantage of it correctly. And I just want to say it's okay to say no sometimes if you knowing that by saying no, you're able to protect yourself, protect your business and not run yourself into the wall because you're just running around trying to figure out how do I get this done? How do I get this done? How do I do this? Or start, you know, overworking your employees and start under promising or over promising and under delivering, right? It's a dangerous situation we're in if we don't capitalize on it correctly. So I think Zach nailed it 100%. And just yesterday, I had two conversations with pool pros, and they were saying the same thing. So they're obviously getting a lot of calls. They're starting to see people in the area that are dropping off. And it's a prime opportunity because both of them were telling me, I'm not taking on any more pools. I can't take on those pools. And with both of them, I said, whoa, 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 whoa. What do you mean you're not taking any more pools? Well, you know, with everything that's going on and all the craze, I'm like, this is a prime opportunity for you to capitalize, like John is saying. So what you should do is you should look at what rate you have. And I, I told them both, I go, you're going to grab your rate and you know drive that rate up another 40 bucks to where you want to be. And then what you do is you go to those new pools, you quote those at those higher rate. If you get them, great. You've got another pool. You can now do what John talks about all the time, which is a top 10, bottom 10. And this is a prime opportunity in the prime window to do that. Look at all the opportunities that are out there and yeah, you're not taking on new accounts because you're going to do what John says with the top 10, bottom 10, you're going to drop those down. But what that's going to do guys is that's going to push your profitability straight up to the top. And now's the time to do it because we don't always get opportunities like this where you're in such high demand, people are dropping off because they just can't stay in business. So now's a prime opportunity for you to take advantage of that. Yeah. And then look, I want thoughts on that, John. No, I think you, you, 100%. And I want to end it with this. And this is my biggest fear, right? Is, you know, a reputation takes years to build and literally takes one day to destroy. Not that we're not able to make mistakes as business owners or as companies, but it's very important that you stick to your core values and you don't make those mistakes that destroy what you've built because you're overextending yourself. So take advantage of this opportunity like Edgar's talking about and saying, okay, well, if you know you've reached your capacity, well, instead of turning away business, 
now go out there with a different mindset like we talk about and figure out, you know, why should I not have this pool? And talk to me about why I don't need this pool and see if now that client now becomes a much better client or a much more profitable client. And you're able to now get rid of some of the the less profitable accounts that you have. And in turn, you're doing the same amount of work, but now you're able to make a little bit more profit now because you have better accounts. There's always a silver lining to any situation. It's just important that we just don't fly into this blindly with our heads cut off, trying to get as much work as we can. Because if you're in this for the long haul, it can do more damage to your reputation than help it. Yeah, I agree 100%. Let's jump into each section and kind of break those down. Let's start talking about the chlorine situation. So, you know, like John said, you we're starting to see a little bit of a light at the end of the tunnel because we know that BioLab will kind of be online by next year. So that's a big, huge relief, right? We'll have all that kind of coming into the product. So that'll take a lot of pressure off. And it allows us to strategize because now we really kind of know what that date is and we'll get to the end of the tunnel. I was with a pool pro yesterday and he called SCP to order some tabs and the cost was $205.93 for a 50 pound bucket. Okay. So those prices are still up there. And he asked them, you know, Hey, how much can I buy? And they were allowing him to buy a pallet at a time. And a pallet I think has how many Zach 24 buckets. Is that right? Something like that. You know, so we're seeing some of the availability that's out there and we're kind of seeing that there's not a lot of restriction. Now, you know, we believe that a lot of that is obviously a lot of the stuff that was in transit and because of the, the supply chain, all those tabs from China and stuff like that, they're making it over here. But Zach, are you seeing the same thing out towards Houston where you're at? Yeah, it seems to be kind of a similar situation here. The prices are very similar and you know continue to go up, but we seem to have much better availability. And a lot of what we're seeing is, you know, maybe if we're Back in the day, if product A was our go-to and we're using product A, product A, well, right now, you know, manufacturer of product A may not be here, but this manufacturer of product A is there. So we're seeing like this cycling of a different brand or a different manufacturer for the same kind of product, whether a pump or a filter or say tabs, you know, we get a bunch of these ones in and then they're all gone and now it's switching to this manufacturer. That's a little challenging when it comes to pricing, because you kind of structure yourself in a way where you know this is the product you go to for this situation, you know your cost, you know what you charge. So it's a lot of like keeping up with pricing and POs and things like that. But I know a lot of people in our area have prepared this year when compared to this time last year, and they're stocked up on products. So it'll be interesting to see, do we have that mad dash that went on, you know, kind of going into summer last year? Or is everyone kind of content? So you're not just going to see everything drained out all at once. And then it's a struggle for the remainder of the summer. Yeah, hopefully that's the case, because that would be great. And we have seen a lot of people, you know, prepare for this year. So that's great. And I think we just need to keep an eye on those dry products because we don't know what the quantity of that product is. So we don't have access to being able to say, hey, there's 100,000 buckets and that's all there is. Like we don't have access to inventory. So I think we're starting to see that there's a little bit more availability. And at this point, that's a great thing. We just need to keep an eye out. And then the other thing that we need to remember is that pretty much starting in April, as you start to progress, you start to see about a 20% increase in consumption. And this is of a product, whether it's liquid or tabs or whatever, they see a 20% increase. So for example, you have your consumption for April and then May is going to be 20% higher than May. And then June is going to be 20% higher than May. And then July, the same pattern. You know, you might think, oh, 20% is not a lot, but consumption from here to peak summer is 100% of what it is today. So it's good that we're seeing some of that. Just, you know, keep an eye out. What I would do is, you know, log into the 360. You can see the availability. Just look at it every so often to see what that inventory is so that you can stay on top of it and at least have a pulse. But I think we're in a better position than we definitely were last year. What about you, John? What What are you seeing out there? I agree. I think inventory levels on some of the dry obviously have increased and you would imagine it would simply because when it's cold, people aren't using tabs from dry. You know, some people are still using dry product, but 
I think the, the demand for all that trichlor and all that dry product last season, you know, whatever companies and wherever outlets we were getting that product from were on overdrive continuing to produce. And I think a lot of POs are finally starting to come in. And I've talked to some distribution centers and they're saying, well, I got tabs up the ass, right? I got so many tabs. I got so many tabs. What am I going <laughs> to do with them? Well, uh-huh. I, I'm afraid that there's going to be a false sense of security to think that we're going to be okay. The reality is, even though I see positive signs of seeing some of that product, I, I still think that we're going to be going through a crunch going into summer. I'm hoping that a lot of pool pros out there, and I know quite a few of them that have done a great job of preparing themselves, that they have a lot of stock going into summer, which, you know, kudos to them. And I hope that's the reason why we have such excess or we have a little more than expected in product. But the truth is that shit's going to dry up really quick. I personally believe it will. And, you know, there's a couple of things that, you know, that we need to also touch on. You know, we're hearing that the upstream raw materials that are used to make chlorine, all types of chlorine are, are continue to be high. And there's, and they're not looking like there's anything or any signs of those prices coming down anytime soon. So that tells us that we're not going to see a price drop anytime or as soon as maybe we're hoping that we would see. We've talked about, you know, these prices I personally don't think are sustainable. Now, don't quote me on this, but I don't think $300 a bucket of tab is what we're going to pay in you know a year or two years from now. Do I think we're going to be back to $80 for a bucket of tabs? Absolutely not. That's never going to happen. Those prices are gone. Those days are gone. Those days are gone. And the only way those prices will come back, there's only one way, is if there's a shift in the industry where the demand for trichlor is greatly reduced, right? And you don't have that supply and demand issue. If people switch over to more liquid feeders or switch over to different forms of sanitizing their pool or chlorinating their pool, those prices will never go down. Just like, you know, it it just works with everything. When there's an abundance of something and not many people want it, the cost of it goes down. I don't see that happening anytime soon within like the next year or two. So expect that the prices will eventually start to retract, but we'll never see those sub $100 buckets of tabs, I personally don't think, in 2022 and not in 2023, for sure. You know, we might see the products on the shelves, but again, it's going to cost us an arm and a leg to, to purchase them. So we have to keep that in mind just because we get we see some inventory. We have to plan and budget that, you know, the cost of obtaining that bucket now is sometimes in some cases two, two and a half times what it was last year. So some other things we have to look at is the cost of freight and the cost of fuel. And this is something that could affect those prices and we need to keep an eye on it. And I don't know about y'all, but gas here, and I think I saw a news story on like a national average has kind of dipped a little bit, but it's, it's nothing close to what it was just a short period ago. So that is going to continue to affect our prices. Yeah, and some of the things that we're hearing, that's a great point, both John, that great point, and Zach, and a a lot of companies are starting to see those freight charges and the gas charges. And so now what's happening when you deal with all the suppliers and distribution is they get their invoice and then they have these surcharges for the freight and they have the surcharges for the gas. So, you know, hopefully we don't get to the point where it's like, we've kind of maxed out, here's the price for the chlorine, but now there's one more thing that we need to worry about, right? So, because what's going to happen is that freight charge and that fuel surcharge is going to get passed to them and then it's going to cost them more money. So what happens at that point as a business, you sit there, you calculate that into your profits and you decide whether you need to pass that cost on or not. So that's another great point. Another big conversation that's happening now, guys, and I'm trying to do a little bit of research on it, but that is there's big talks of algicide shortages for this summer. So we're kind of trying to figure that out. And I know that sodium bromide over the long run, and we'll have somebody come on and explain that whole sodium bromide process, but eventually sodium bromide for pool will be kind of non-existent so that people will stop making the sodium bromide. So we'll get into that whole conversation on a different point. But the next topic that I wanted to talk about, guys, is product availability and supply chain issues. And I know that we've seen some products and equipment now become a little bit more available from what we've seen. 
what I'm seeing is a little bit more different from store to store. And so what I mean by that is I can see some inventory and I'll see that somebody has 20 pumps and then the next five stores all the way around them, none of them have pumps. Or there is certain products that, yeah, are still available and some are in back order. So what I'm tending to see is a little bit of of that imbalance. What are you guys seeing out in the field? I'm seeing the same thing, but, you know, you kind of, it brings up the point that I was talking about before, but on the manufacturing side, right? And I, I can't help but think about this. Not only do we have issues now, we have price increases that we have to deal and we have to absorb as businesses, but we have inventory issues. And then now that when we finally do get inventory, right, now we're having a problem with the product and that the product's not working or there's defects or quality control, yeah, we have issues. And you have these big billion dollar, million dollar corporations that are going through the same shit. And it's what I'm trying to warn us as service people, when you take on more than you can, or you try to do as much as you possibly can, something gives, right? You can't, it's just something has to give. You can only give a hundred percent and that hundred percent, you have to allocate that percentage to whatever you deem is necessary, whatever you deem is important. You can never exceed that hundred percent. And when you take on more than you, than you can possibly do, and I commend them, right, for trying to push things out and try to do what you need to do. But unfortunately, we've seen the, the aftermath of it. And I'm not going to name specific products, but there are plenty of products from multiple manufacturers that we're getting, that we're having issues that we've never had issues before with. And now, you know, when we have to wait for something for six months, and then when we finally get it, it's a piece of shit and it doesn't work. And now I got a customer that I have to worry. Now we're in a whole heap of, it's a whole nother problem we're in, right? This is a stressful part of business when things are out of your control. I can make a decision to do certain things, right? Or, you know, there's a lot of things that are in my control, but when I have to relinquish some of that ownership or that control, and I'm dependent on somebody else to come through on what they say they're going to come through, and it doesn't happen, you know, it puts us in a bad position. It's just a whole host of problems now that we're dealing with. But again, you know, we'll get through it and and we'll do what we need to do. As far as like the product inventories between branches and branches, it happens all the time. And I see it. And the truth is most of it's bullshit. You go into these distributors and you start seeing it and everybody's hiding product. And some people have it. Some people don't. Some say they have it. Some say they don't. But they really got product back there. And you can check and see. And they got fake POs or they got this bullshit. And, you know, it's these games that you have to play. And it just drives me bonkers. It's already hard enough. And it just wish we just kind of figure this shit out. But it's kind of always been like that. But when it gets to where things where the demand for product is really high, you start to see this shit happening. And it's frustrating, but, you know, you just have to be persistent and you have to make relationships with the crew that's there and start asking questions and not just, you have this? No, I don't. Okay. Well, when will we have it? What do we need to do to get one? You know, who can I contact and just start being persistent and doing what you need to do so you can get it. But yeah, I see it all the time as far as pumps, you know. And that's a great point. That's something I hadn't even thought about with regards to the products and some warranty issue. That's huge. Yeah, and I want to jump in. I mean, everything John was just saying, that's exactly what we're seeing here. And we don't shop at too many different places, but from company to company, the trend of what they have seems to be the same. If we're out of product A with this company, then this company seems to be out of product A. But what John was saying between branches, we're seeing this branch over in this state may have 26 of what we're trying to get. There's zero here locally. But they're not releasing it because, and and I get it. They're trying to take care of their customers there, but it just becomes super frustrating. It's like, it's right there within reach. We've already got our customers that have been waiting for this. Like we need that product. And I think the freeze last year just really made that a huge deal. We're seeing a little bit more of like that, I guess, willingness to give up a product or transfer a product, but it's still just trying to plan ahead. And this is, these are the times where it really matters the relationship that you build with whatever supplier you're going with. And, you know, just talking to a lot of people that I know that work at distribution or whatever store and the beating that they took, a lot of those people don't have control of the situation. And all last year, I mean, I heard about fights almost breaking out in different branches and things like that. And the things that people were saying or how they were treating them was just terrible. And it's times like this where, you know what, there may be one in town and you're extra nice. You've always been nice. You've been patient. You've treated them with respect. You've done business with them. And 
maybe it magically shows up. So it's times like this where that stuff really matters and things will smooth out. And then somewhere down in the future, years down the road, there'll be another hiccup with the economy or whatever. So just try to be nice, try to build those relationships. But we're seeing pretty much the same thing as everyone else. Those are absolutely great points. And we talk about it all the time is is really building relationships is key. So if you're somebody that's out there, you don't like to build a lot of relationships, at some point, having those connections will help you make sure that you network and make connections with either other pool pros in the area, with the sales reps, going to the shows. Networking is is just as important. Hey, Zach, John, let's take a word from our sponsors. When we come back, we will continue. Zach, I'm going to keep thinking about that link that John said about the ugly thing, because I'm kind of getting a little bit of a complex over here. I think he threw that in our face to make fun of us. And he's just kind of like laughing it off over there. Like, look at him, look at him. He's just kind of like laughing over there. Like I pulled that over them when they played it. He's very insecure, yeah. John. He is he's very man. insecure yeah. about his looks. Well, when you bring up <laughs> his shoe size, he gets upset. <laughs> It really hits them hard. Sorry, Edgar, I crossed the line. My apologies. All right, guys, I take a word from our sponsors. We'll be right back. The Hyper Poll from Ultimate Pool Tools is a pool care poll designed by pool professionals for pool professionals, featuring precision crafted carbon fiber and stainless steel construction. Go to ultimatepooltools.com or Instagram at Ultimate Pool Tools. Pool pros have specific needs when it comes to general liability insurance. The SPPA program has you covered. With three tailored and customizable general liability options, SPPA makes it easy for pool pros to feel secure. Find out more and get covered at the SPPA.com. Now available, Pool Invoice. Pool Invoice is a pool billing software created specifically for the pool service and repair industry. It's developed for our industry and only our industry. Pool Invoice is built with reoccurring billing in mind. You can print, email, text invoices, or even send via WhatsApp. You can add reoccurring or yearly charges, accept credits, and set up auto pay. You can even see when customers have seen the invoice. It even has a customer portal where they can log in and see, print, and pay invoices. It has all your customers' information on one page, so you don't need to search through hundreds of invoices looking for the one you need. Just go to the customer profile and it's all at your fingertips. Created specifically for the pool industry, Pool Invoice. Now available at PoolInvoice.com. Blu-ray XL is the power of minerals working for you. Reduce your overall chemical costs and labor up to 50% guaranteed. Whether you have 20 accounts or 20,000, Blu-ray XL's direct pricing and free shipping to the pool trade have you covered. Improving pool professionals' profit and work-life balance is what they do. Blu-ray XL, the real mineral purifier. Visit them at BluRayXL.com. Blu-ray all day. Welcome back, everybody. There is John taking, uh, sending pictures of me there on the. <laughs> <laughs> you put that on your profile on your that's uh, a great picture. picture you know what you know what uh, that yeah. completely makes sense now why john sent me the video of the ugly dude because if that's really what i look like holy cow you know what i deserve it john i deserve the, Here, the steve harvey i think you were like googling over look at looking at zach <laughs> Zach is that's like, right <laughs> just, just don't get jealous because i look at like that at zach i know, you know? Right? don't be yeah. like i wish you looked at me like like you look at zach you know you kind of get all you know wow <laughs> wow so anyways kelly big shout out to you over there welcome back everybody we continue our conversation with the challenges that we see for 2022 and the next topic that I want to talk about, guys, and this one doesn't affect every pool pro out there, but it does affect a lot of the pool pros out there, and that is labor. And we continue to see a labor shortage and a lot of employees jumping from job to job. And it seems to be what's happening now, and it's kind of changed the name from the great resignation to the great reshuffle. And scary enough, John Zach, last month, there was 4 million employees that left their jobs. Okay. And there was 
48 million employees that left their jobs in 2021. It's just staggering. What's crazy is that 44% of your workforce of employees are active job seekers. And that doesn't mean that if something comes, they'll take it. They're active job seekers. They're looking for other jobs. So if you have 10 people, four of your employees are looking for other jobs. Companies continue to raise the pay in order to attract because we're talking about a pool of people. It's that labor market, that group of people. And people want to be a part of something. That's been made very clear. And companies continue raising the pay. But to me, at some point, that becomes unsustainable. What's going to happen when the economy corrects itself and comes back down? What's going to happen, especially if you have big, huge companies that you have thousands of employees and you've had to do that? To me, it becomes unsustainable. Zach, what are your thoughts on it and what are you seeing in your market? Well, it's been absolutely unreal. And you've heard, you know, I call you all the time with crazy stories that we're dealing with. And someone in the chat was just talking about 97 applications over a three-day period for a pool technician job. And we've experienced the same thing. We've had a ton of applications and we've scheduled a ton of interviews. And I would say that only maybe 25 or 30% of people actually show up for the interview. And it's just mind boggling. Some of these people we're talking to three, four times different times before they come in an interview, they're calling back, what's the address? I'll be there. And it's like, and then they don't show up. It's just absolutely crazy. And what I'm seeing is there's a lot of arrogance with people that come in. So we're getting these like a lot of like requests for very high pay in relationship to what the job is. We've had someone telling me they need $60,000 a year to do a pool route. And a lot of people seem surprised that we're even actually interviewing them and going through that process kind of like it's beneath them. Like, what are, why are we even going through this? Like they should just have the job handed to them. So it's been really a tricky situation. But all of that being said, I think people who are taking the time to really look at their recruiting process, like what messaging are they sending out to people? What questions are they asking in the interview? I think that the people that spend the time kind of refining that and improving those processes will be much stronger when that economy somehow corrects or has a shift or a change. And I mean, we're already shifting from the great resignation to the great, what did you call it? The reshuffling. We're talking in a matter of like two or three years, all of this has gone on. That's a very short blip of time. Like imagine how much change is going to happen over the course of the next three years. And as far as what you were saying about raising pay, it's like this race to the top right now. Everyone's like, oh, I'm going to pay this much more. And the next person's going to pay this much more. And those big companies, they're not afraid to pull the plug if a change comes that requires them to. So I think a lot of these people that are hopping around and they don't value so much of like, they value the the pay more than you know the environment or the job security, they're going to be in for a rude awakening at some point. And, and so we have to be mindful of what we are willing to pay people because we can't just keep racing to the top. A lot of these companies we can't compete with. And then we don't want to be stuck in a situation where the market does correct. And then we're overpaying for what the job actually is. What about you, John? What are you seeing out there? I know you talk to a lot of people. No, you know, I'm just, I'm trying to, I'm just absorbing it all and kind of, you know, we're not personally hiring for anybody. So are we familiar with the job market or the the environment right now? I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on our current situation, but what I can go fall back on is prior experience and being in the situation of, of needing to hire people. And there was a point in time where I had to hire about 220 employees to open up a store. And when we hire people or when we bring people in, people that qualify or pass the screen or test, it's like a psychological test or whatever, and we bring them in, we would usually lose about 20% of the people wouldn't show up. We schedule 10 interviews and then like 20% of the people wouldn't come up or well, wouldn't show and we'd get like 80% of them would show for the job. Now what Zach is talking about is it's flipped, right? You get 80% of them don't show or 75% of them don't show and 25% of them show. So it's just interesting to kind of see it, but you know, it all comes down to, you know, what we've said, it's just a different type of market now, right? It's a job seekers environment. I believe the reason why people aren't showing is because there's such an abundance of jobs available that they probably found 
a better looking job or they think is a better looking opportunity. So they prioritize and don't be fooled when somebody's applying for your job that you're the only job they're applying for. If you schedule an interview with somebody, I guarantee you they're also looking for work with different companies. And if they have interviews scheduled with those companies, they're going to prioritize what's more important to them. And whether it's like, should I take this interview for this job would I rather, or this job for this one? Where people, you know, they're not going to pass up the opportunity and say, okay, yeah, I'll go out. We'll, I want to interview and, and yeah, we'll set up. I'll be there. I'm excited. But then someone else called on their resume or someone else called for them to come in for an interview. And they said, well, no shit, I'd rather have this job than that job. And that's why they don't show up to the other one. I think what you said, Zach, and what you said, Edgar, too, we're eventually going to pop. It's going to change. Things are going to reset a little bit and it's going to calm down. And when you talked about corporate people pulling the plugs or big companies, absolutely. They have no hesitation to lay off people. And it will happen. You know, John, a lot of them are publicly traded companies. Oh, for sure. And so when you have a publicly traded company, that it's all about the numbers. It's it's, it's Wall Street. It's what you say that you're going to. So they have to pull the plug. There's no, well, they there's do. no it, other way to do it. Well, and the reason why is because a company's biggest expense is labor, period. And if you have a lot of excess fat, you trim the fat. And if you can run leaner and more productive with less amount of people or as productive with less amount of people, then you will. And that's just business. And that's just the way it works. And it'll eventually shift and it'll come back down. But it doesn't happen overnight, right? It's a gradual thing that ends up happening. You know, Mike said on the chat, 97, this is crazy. I remember conversations before where you couldn't find somebody for an interview. And now all of a sudden you got so many people for, you got a hundred people looking for, for work. And usually that's a sign of a bad economy, right? Because you got so many people, job seekers out there and not enough jobs or not, but that's not really, it's weird. It's like a perfect storm where it's just like, it's a game almost for people that are looking for jobs now. And it's like, oh shit, there's an abundance of everything out there. I'm just going to throw, cast out a, a wide net here and here we go. And it's not so much, they don't quite take it as serious as they did before in the past. And I think that's why you get some of that arrogance when people are walking in, into an interview room. We always used to say, when you come to an interview, you come dressed up, shirt and tie or suit or whatever, you know, those types of things. How do you, do they show up on time? Are they early? Are they late? You know, how do they hold themselves? Those are the types of things that were, that's not the mentality anymore. They're walking into an interview, like, what can you do for me? Like there's some big corporate CEO or, you know, or there's some big hot shot and like, you know, everybody headhunters are all looking for them and, you know, and they're saying, yeah, yeah, what, what can you do for me? What can you bring to the table for me? And they're coming in looking to be a pool technician or to answer phones. And not saying that there's anything wrong with that, but I'm just saying that the skill level required to be a secretary or maybe to do warehouse work or maybe to work at a fast food joint or to do that kind of stuff isn't quite as high as, you know, being um, an electrician or, you know, being a pool technician or, you know, being a, a nurse. It's just weird. And it's not weird, but it's just fascinating to just kind of see how this all unfolds and the struggles. And I feel for every one of you out there that are looking for employees right now, but most importantly, when you do obtain them, how to retain them, right? And, and to keep that turnover rate down because it's such a dog eat dog uh, world out there when it comes down to hiring and maintaining employees without them wanting to jump ship because they're thinking the grass is green on the other side. You said four out of 10 employees are currently actively seeking another job. What's funny is it's not necessarily because they don't like what they do. It's just that they're just trying to level up their game and try to make more money somewhere else. And they're not thinking the whole big picture like Zach was talking about. Eventually, it's going to come crashing down. It will. And their bubbles are going to be popped. But it's a fascinating show to watch. Definitely. We've had several people and they're like, okay, I have all these other job interviews and your turn. Go. You know, like now we're like you talked about dressing up presenting well now it's like holy crap now we have to present well like how do we get them to buy in and we're having to walk the line and interesting story kind of on how everyone is trying to level up we had one person you know got the whole story how out of all their interviews we're the one they want to go with and blah 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 first day on the job by 10 a.m they got dropped off and said i'm out of here i got another job called me and said we're good to go first day on the job by 10 a.m it's just crazy that's crazy and that's the truth. And see, that's what I'm saying. It's just because they got so many opportunities out there and it's just like, wow. 
So we need to take a moment and thank our people that have stuck with us and say thank you. Exactly. And don't forget about them. The biggest thing a company can do sometimes, and the problem is, and you hear it, is like you have all these bonuses and incentives to try to bring new talent onto your companies. Don't forget about the people that have stuck around and have been there for you, right? Loyalty matters. And you need to find ways to reward those people. I personally, this is what I would do. And this is what worked really well for me when I had to hire a lot of people. When you found quality employees or people that work for you that you liked, right? And that were a good fit and did well. You're a product of your environment, right? So that means that type of mentality, they're usually attracted to other people, friends, family members that have that same mentality. Incentivize them to find good quality people to bring on board. It does two things for you. One, it limits the guesswork. Chances are the people that bring somebody on are going to bring somebody who's a good worker because it's going to look good for them. If they're a good worker, right, they're not going to want to bring a shithead on. You're going to incentivize them for doing that and rewarding them for bringing somebody on. And then most importantly, it's going to create an environment where they're going to be happier and their morale is going to be higher. One, because you're because you're leaning on them. Two, because now they have people that they care about or that they enjoy working with or being around working with them at their job. So I would say Try to try that approach. I don't know if you did that, Zach, or have you done that, but you know, talk to the people that are good and that have been there and say, hey, look, I know you have good people. Bring good people on and do a bonus. Like, hey, sign on bonus. You bring somebody on who's a good quality employee, incentivize them for it. And if they stick around after six months, give them a second bonus, whether it's a thousand bucks, you give them 500 bucks for bringing them on if you decided on hiring them. And then six months down the road, if they're still there, shoot them another $500 or a thousand bucks. That's cheaper than... All that time you're spending interviewing people and then them coming in, hiring them, and then them leaving and that doing that turnover and all that you have to go through. It's much cheaper that way. And then plus, you're now using it as an opportunity to reward those that are loyal to you. Hey, guys, let's do this. Let's take our final word from our sponsors, Zach John. When we come back, I want to get your final thoughts. The Hyper Pole from Ultimate Pool Tools is a pool care pole designed by pool professionals for pool professionals, featuring precision crafted carbon fiber and stainless steel construction. Go to ultimatepooltools.com or Instagram at Ultimate Pool Tools. Pool pros have specific needs when it comes to general liability insurance. The SPPA program has you covered. With three tailored and customizable general liability options, SPPA makes it easy for pool pros to feel secure. Find out more and get covered at the SPPA.com. Now available, Pool Invoice. Pool Invoice is a pool billing software created specifically for the pool service and repair industry. It's developed for our industry and only our industry. Pool Invoice is built with reoccurring billing in mind. You can print, email, text invoices, or even send via WhatsApp. You can add reoccurring or yearly charges, accept credits, and set up auto pay. You can even see when customers have seen the invoice. It even has a customer portal where they can log in and see, print, and pay invoices. It has all your customers' information on one page, so you don't need to search through hundreds of invoices looking for the one you need. Just go to the customer profile and it's all at your fingertips. Created specifically for the pool industry, Pool Invoice. Now available at PoolInvoice.com. Blu-ray XL is the power of minerals working for you. Reduce your overall chemical costs and labor up to 50% guaranteed. Whether you have 20 accounts or 20,000, Blu-ray XL's direct pricing and free shipping to the pool trade have you covered. Improving pool professionals' profit and work-life balance is what they do. Blu-ray XL, the real mineral purifier. Visit them at BluRayXL.com. Blu-ray all day. Welcome back, everybody. We're talking to Zach. We're talking to John. We're talking about the challenges that we see going into the summer of 2022. So we're in our final thoughts. Zach, I'm going to let you go first. We need to have like a Blu-ray all day challenge thing. Like freaking everyone go out and as they're putting one in, do the Blu-ray all day. That's a good idea. Post it. Tag Pool Nation. I don't know how we quantify a winner of the challenge, but hey, 
Everyone get on board. I would say Devin would do it and he would win. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we would have to have Devin. So final thoughts. I know there are a lot of different things being thrown at us and it's honestly getting exhausting trying to maneuver through it all. But when I think about it, there is a certain quote that pops in my head to kind of sum it all up. Let's see if you guys know this quote, but if you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. And that's what I constantly, Edgar has no idea what I'm talking about. That's what I constantly think about. And so I hope everyone is out there and everything that's being thrown at them, all of these wrenches, you know, you're working on practicing, dodging them. And then when things lighten up, you'll be a uh, really light on the feet and be able to maneuver through it also. I'm going to Google it. Let me see what Steve Harvey says. I got that. That was a badass quote, by the way. That one of my favorite, one of my favorite movies probably. No, that's uh, And it applies. It does apply. The other one that always sticks in my head from that one too is uh, I drink my own urine because it's, because it's, uh, what is it? <laughs> screw that up. You guys talking about the movie Dodgeball? Yeah, Dodgeball. <laughs> Dodgeball. Yes. Uh, one of my favorite movies. So that's perfect. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. Absolutely. My thing is, I totally messed up that quote, but what, what is it? I, I, oh, I drink my own urine because I like the taste and it's something. I can't remember what it was, so somebody <laughs> helped me out. But uh, Wow. <laughs> it's wow. sterile. It, there it is. It, because it's sterile. And I, I like the ting and it's says. sterile is what they're saying over here. Yeah, that's it right there. There it goes. <laughs> But, um, you know, I, I think this is a great podcast and this is what's funny is that, you know, for the last couple of days this is all we've been talking about on the phone. And it's funny that we brought this up and that we're, and, and that this is on the minds of every business owner right now, especially who has employees or who's looking to hire employees. You guys are all in some form or fashion going through this struggle and it's real and it's very important to make calculated moves and to make the right moves so that you can set yourself up for success and you can capitalize on the situation and not be held down or damaged by the situation. We can go on talking for another two hours about this, right? And, and what we're facing. But if anybody gets anything out of this is don't be laxed right now. Don't fall under the false sense of security that, hey, look, there's so many applicants out here that it's going to be easy for me to find somebody. And Zach, you nailed it when you said, you know, the mentality, the shift in mental state from the job applicants. It's like the, the tides have turned in their favor. And it's been that way for a little while. And now we're, I think we're all the way up at the peak of what it's like when the market turned in their favor. But again, it's just, wow, how fast, just think about the last couple of years, man. What a, what a, what a roller coaster. Everybody. And talk about getting like hard not, I mean, this is, if, if you survived from two years ago and you're able to survive the next year and a half, you are a seasoned vet when it comes down to being an entrepreneur and a business owner. Congratulations to you. You have learned a lifetime's worth of lessons in a very short period of time, and you've managed to successfully navigate yourself, your business through it. And once all this passes, I promise you, you will definitely thrive. You will build a business that is built to last. So again, kudos to everybody out there. We know the struggle is real. Another thing I want to say, hey, look, remember, go on our website, click on that button, answer us. Ask us some questions that you want us to cover, either on the podcast or the Instagram live. I thoroughly enjoyed this uh, podcast. Thank you, boys, for jumping in and listening to us live and giving us a laugh. Much appreciated. Other than that, have a wonderful night. I got to get to work or wonderful day. You know, there's a lot of things out there that are obviously still going on. So things are starting to s slow down just a tad. And I'm not saying that it, they're slowing down. We were in this crazy, crazy demand. Things are now leveling itself to a, a high demand, right? We don't have that continuous craze. And the Fed raised rate interest rate a little bit. So that'll kind of slow down the borrowing and stuff like that. So we're still going to be very busy, but it, it's not going to be that complete craze. But like John said, you can't take your eye off the prize. You can't, you know, lose focus now now and think that everything's going to go back to normal. You have to keep your finger on the pulse. And the last thing that I'm going to say before we jump on here, guys, is for those of you that have employees, really focus on that retention. You know, you really have to be able to maintain because normally what we do is we focus on the problem and we're focusing on hiring and hiring and hiring and hiring. And what happens is we forget about the people that we have in-house. So focus on them focus on retaining those employees so that as you bring more people in, the more you can retain. So if you take your eye off of that, you're going to be in that vicious cycle. So anyways, 
Zach, John, I want to thank you for your time as usual. Everybody have a great weekend. John and I will be on the Instagram live on next Wednesday. We'll see you then. Bye, guys. See you guys. Bye. Thanks for listening to the Pool Nation podcast, a member of the Pool Nation family. You can listen to us live every Friday here at 9 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Central, and 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. You can find us at Pool Nation or PoolNationPodcast.com, on Facebook, or on Instagram at Pool.Nation. And to find more info about Pool Invoice, the billing software built specifically for the pool industry, go to PoolInvoice.com. Before you go, this is what the pool industry has been waiting for. PoolManUniversity.com. It's the first platform dedicated to learning the swimming pool service and repair industry. A pool service community where you can connect and find videos on business, service, water chemistry, and repairs. See you there at PoolManUniversity.com. Pool Nation, all rights reserved. No part of this podcast may be reproduced in a verbal or nonverbal way may not be distributed. It may not be distributed in any social media platforms or transmitted in any other forms or any other means, including recording or other electronic or mechanical methods without the prior written permission of Pool Nation.